Continuing on with our season previews of the BC Hockey League 2016-17 season, joined right now by the head coach and general manager of the defending RBC Cup champion West Kelowna Warriors, it is Ryland Furster. Ryland, thanks so much for taking the time to chat here. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So your team is the one that was left standing at the end of the 2015-16 season of Canadian Junior A Hockey, and as such, a lot of holes for your club to fill uh, heading into the, the off season. Uh, what were you specifically looking for when it came to recruiting for this season? Well, probably the same thing as every year, Brian. I mean, you're looking to add some, you know, some character quality people um, to your program. And recruiting starts so early now. It doesn't really start at the end of the year like it did, you know, maybe 15 years ago. Recruiting is a 365-day-a-year nonstop process. So, I mean, you're... You know, if you I'm sure when you talk to most most coaches in our league, they'll say that you know you're always you're constantly recruiting. So, you know, we obviously knew some pieces we were you know we were trying to to fill. But I mean, um, you know, you're going to lose people in in all areas. So when when you start your recruiting process really early, you're just looking to to you know to fill those. But you had a veteran club last year, a lot of ninety fives and ninety six born players at the top end. So. Did you sort of have a, a roadmap going into the recruiting process, regardless of when that started, of what you knew you were going to need coming into this season? Well, again, sometimes, and, you know, certainly for us, I mean, you know, January 10th were, you know, two holes for two guys that would have been back, right? I mean, um, you know, we lost, uh, you know, obviously the futures with Brett Manier and Tanner Campbell at the time. So, I mean, up until January 10th, if you're a team that's a buyer or seller, you really don't know exactly. Um, you know, so you're just trying to recruit good, you know, good players. And I try to recruit for holes. Um, so again, like, you know, you're, you know, obviously when we were losing the likes of the Liam Blackburns and the 20 year olds and stuff, but you're also, you know, trying to mold your other guys to hopefully they, they can move up in the lineup, i.e. the Reed Gunvilles, the Jared Marinos, obviously Quinn Foreman and Connor Sonnegren, um, you know, were very, you know, good players for us last year. And, um, you know, basically top six guys or whatever you want to say, they played a minute, you know, they played uh, in minute roles for us. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of pieces that you're, you know, like you're hoping that'll kind of move up, but it's hard to say, well, you know, you, you know, we're not going to replace Jonathan Davian by recruiting or, you know, Liam Blackburn by recruiting. I mean, for me, those are the younger guys. Now, your your team was the one that was at the top of the mountain, and you're a guy that's been around the Junior A game for a long, long time. Um, but do you still find yourself from season to season learning new things and potentially having to change or adapt your style or philosophy? 100%, 100%. I'm always trying to learn if I go to a camp with a bunch of coaches, you'll be sitting down, you'll be talking about them. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're, you know, you don't change the way I think you're, you know, you want, you know, how you want to run your program, so to speak. But yeah, I, I, I certainly think you have to change. I mean, obviously last year we were a big veteran, um, heavy type team, so to speak. Well, we're not, well, we're not going to be that way this year. Um, so you have to change. You know, you, you you have to look and you have to adapt and you have to change some things. I think you, you know everyone wants their you know everyone coach every coach wants their team to be the hardest working team in the league and you know be difficult to play against and all that difficult in a way that yeah, I think you play hard. Um, I think I think that's probably a standard if you talk to most coaches. You know the you know they want their cornerstone to be hard work, but the one thing you have to kind of look at is. Uh, I think I do. I have to take a step back, and now that I'm a, a little older, I, I try to more. But you know, not try to just say, "Well, we have this type of team, and I want to do it this way." You know, you kind of have to coach the players that you have, so to speak. So I think that's important when you, you know, when you kind of get your 22 guys assembled or your 21 guys assembled, you kind of have to look at them and say, "Okay, well, we're maybe more this and not and not that." I know that was, you know, that was one thing I learned actually as a really young coach going from Salmon Arm. Um, to Victoria that year. I mean, um, the the divisions at, at that time, Brian, were totally different um, in the way they played. And you you know, it took me a little bit, but I remember sitting back one day and thinking, you know what, uh, we've got to change the way we play here. You know, when in Rome, kind of play like Rome. So obviously, fans in West Kelowna there are on a, a big high with your team winning the RBC Cup. Um, what can the fans expect from this club compared to last season going into this season? 
That's a good question. Again, we're going to have, a, you know what, a lot of new faces. I mean, I like some of the guys returning, but we're going to have a lot of new faces, and we know that, of course. Um, you know, I think we're going to be able to skate maybe a little bit better than we did last year. Um, it just kind of seems that way early on here. We might be able to scoot a little bit better than we were uh, than we did last year. Now, you talked about last year's team being a heavy, veteran-laden squad, and that was obviously a big strength of, of your team. Uh, what do you feel is the strength on the cusp now of the 2016-17 West Kelowna Warriors? Well, I mean, the, the, the area where we kind of return the most guys is um, on defense. Um, you know, we, I think we return, you know, some nice key pieces there um, in Nicholas Ritigliano and Jake Harrison and obviously uh, Tyler Anderson. And I think we've recruited a couple guys who can come in and play some quality minutes for us. And then making the deal, obviously, for Steven Kleisson the other day, another veteran defenseman. You know, if I have to look at our team right now, you know, I just have to say that's kind of a strength. Because, again, Brian, we only return four guys up front, but then we've made the deal for the veteran uh, Mitchell Barker out of Victoria. So, I mean, um, we'll certainly have some work to do. There's no, there, uh, there's no question there. The defending champions always have a target on their back. For your club this year, would you say that's your biggest challenge, the fact that everyone's going to be gunning for you? Well, see, I, I, I don't know. I mean, are people gunning for us? I mean, possibly. I mean, at our level, like the changeover from year to year is, you know, for the most part, pretty significant. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure Penticton will still be the team to beat again this year. I mean, and they're hosting. I mean, you know, they lost seven games last year. So, I'm, you know, since I've been in, you know, in West Kelowna, they've certainly been, the, you know, the perennial powerhouse, as everyone knows. And I'm assuming they will be again. So the target on your back thing, I don't know. And, again, our team has changed so much that, mm-hmm. you, know, I, you know, I think it's different maybe if it's at the pro level. Um, where, you know, you return, you know, half to maybe three quarters of your team after a championship season. So, I mean, that's a question for other guys. I mean, you know, um, is there a target on, on, on our back? I'm not sure. Now, you talked about the, the the returning core that you've got on defense and not a lot returning up front. But with some of the players that you do have coming back, which ones do you expect to step up and maybe play a bigger role this season than, than they did last well, we certainly need the need the likes of um, Reed Gunville and Jared Marino to do that. Um, those are two guys that are really going to need to to step up. And for us to be successful, we'll need guys like that because we don't return, you know, six or seven guys who we can say are you know going to be able to be those minute type guys. So those are two guys, and you know, obviously the players that are coming back, they did have a long playoff run and won a championship. So you know, hopefully. Um, uh, you know they can draw. They can draw from that. Is there already a personality with this team of new guys, or this mix of new players um, combined with your returning guys, or is it too soon to say that there there's a personality for your squad? I think it's too soon to say. It's tough. I mean, obviously the guys coming back were pretty excited. Like most, like most years, your veterans are coming back and they're excited because they should be having a bigger role for the most part than they did the year before, um, you know, uh, to, to some degree. So, you know, in a lot of my years, again, veterans are, you know, usually excited to come back. It's a new year. It's fresh. Um, you know, they're anxious to get back. So uh, I, I don't know if there's a personality, you know, so to speak yet. I mean, I think that kind of cultivates itself over the course of, you know, maybe your exhibition season or your camp. Or, again, you sort of have to, once all the pieces get together, Brian, you just have to see how they all kind of fit in. I think that's one of the biggest challenges as a coach or general manager. I mean, it's not just a staff where I'm putting, you know, a bunch of great players on on the ice. It's, you know, you have to find sort of the right pieces and the right guys who are going to be able to accept roles and be able to play in certain roles. I mean, it'd be nice to just go get the, you know, the 22 best players, but those guys might not all get along. So again, character and uh, dynamics of a dressing room are so important. One last thing before I let you run, Ryland. Now, what does it mean to be a West Kelowna Warriors player? Well, I think, you you know, we want to be, you know, it's, I think it's a privilege. I mean, um, but I think it's a privilege to play junior hockey, um, you know, to, 
respect, obviously, the logo and respect the community. And, um, you know, it's a privilege to play junior hockey, but not only, you know, in our league. And then, you know, we, we want it to be a special place. So, um, you know, basically, don't take things lightly. Again, you're in a great league. Um, you're in a great province. And you're in, um, you know, I'd like to think you're in a good program, too. All right, Rylan Furster, the general manager and head coach of the West Kelowna Warriors on the cusp of the 2016-17 season. Uh, Rylan, thanks so much for doing this, and best of luck this season. Yeah, you bet, Brian. Anytime. Take care. Thanks.